the rabbit hole digs deeper. The more people that come in, the more people that can't get out. And even if you do get out, the hole just sucks you back in. Look, I know another YouTuber did this guy already, but let me have my moment again. Ah! Stop drinking this. Hello, I'm Jason. It's today's the epitome of degeneracy, as I need therapy for this bullshit called anime. See, anime and nicotine go hand in hand together. Like hands. But hey, it isn't all bad. It's just one is more addicting than the other. Can you tell which one that is? In 2020, we took a look at Hollow Live, a virtual YouTuber idol agency. Back then, it was a rising flower in the ever-growing, then barely tapped VTuber market. Since then, Hollow Life has blossomed not just as an idol agency, but a full-blown multimedia project spanning across the internet. And today, we're going to recap what happened between then and now. If you're unaware, Hollow Life Production is a group of a ton of VTubers working under the umbrella of CoverCorp. Basically, they're a company specializing in augmented and virtual reality software, and they manage these little spawns of degeneracy. And to explain what a VTuber is in the simplest way possible, think of a traditional streamer, but instead of using a face cam, they play an animated character. This can range from your traditional cutesy anime girl to... <laughs> Compared to 2020, there's a ton of VTubers to consume now, even outside of Hollow Live. With companies like Niji Sanji, Update, V Shoujo, and the countless amounts of independent talents, there is no shortage of VTubers out there right now. But we're primarily focusing on Hollow Live and their insane growth over the last year. I kinda talked about them at a bad time last year, didn't I? And oh boy, did that bite me in the ass, because only three days after I published that video, on August 6, 2020, Hollow Live announced five new VTubers to be added to their lineup. These include Yukihana Lami, Nono Suzunene, Shishiro Botan, Umaru Polka, and. Wait, what? The last one was. Oh, we're off to a great fucking start! Hollow Live Gen 5 had a little trouble starting off. One of the talents, Mano Alloway, got herself into controversy. She accidentally leaked her design months before she was supposed to debut. In short, she was testing her model, but she forgot to delete the test stream, and this was considered a breach of contract. She debuted on August 15th, 2020, and a mere two days later, she was suspended for two weeks. This caused a typhoon within VTuber fans. To a westerner like me, it was nothing more than an innocent mistake. However, I do acknowledge that this is confidential information that should have been double-checked at the very least. But because idol culture in Japan requires their talents to be perfect, this was a pretty big deal. She was bullied, harassed, and even got her personal information leaked. People called her personal phone just to harass her for this incident. That's pretty fucked up. She did a stream where she apologized and pleaded for people not to dox her a couple of days after this incident occurred. But that wouldn't matter anymore because on August 31st, 2020, Mano Alloway retired as a VTuber only two weeks after her debut in three streams, two of which were apology streams. It's a pretty shitty situation altogether, and it raises the question, why are people willing to go this far? And I know most fans aren't like this, but the vocal minority was what caused this whole situation to go down the way it did. It also blows because Alloway seemed like she was going to be one of the most standout members of Hollow Live as a whole. Her debut stream was a fun time, and she had a charismatic personality that can entertain for hours. It just goes to show the fragility of someone whose career is under the public eye, face shown or not. Under that guise of a succubus, she was just a normal ass person, and it blows that she had to deal with the wrath of idol and VTuber fans. One upside to this is that she isn't being treated like she's taboo. All the other members seem to wish her well in whatever she's doing now, and even though Hollow 5 is just Hollow 4 now, Alloway won't be forgotten.
As for the rest of Gen 5, they're doing quite well for themselves, all of them still streaming to this day. Botan is definitely the most popular one, and it's for good reason. She's good at games, has a cool design, and is probably one of the most talented members of Hollow Live. Even though I prefer the more chaotic side of the agency, Botan has stood out as someone who's chill and skilled at video games, and is one of my personal favorite talents. Polka is one crazy fennec, and with her design being based on the clown, it's no wonder why she's one of the funniest members within the group. And honestly, I haven't watched Nene or Lamy enough to give my full opinion on them, but the two are definitely fan favorites within the community. So because of the Alloy incident, Cover Corp took action against people who leak any personal information or harass their idols. And it really makes me wonder what they were doing before, but hey, better late than never. It only took someone's career. But unfortunately, this wouldn't be the last controversy Hollow Live will face in the year, as there's more to come. On a more positive note, a month after Hollow Live Gen 5 was announced, on September 8th, 2020, a new branch of the agency was formed, known as Hollow Myth, better known as Hollow Live EN. This branch was dedicated to the first English speaking asterisk branch of Hollow Live. This was huge, and it couldn't have came at a better time. Hollow Live, at that point, was starting to take off within the Western world, and to have an English-speaking branch tailor-made for the Western market is huge. And the payoff was in spades, because Hollow Live EN would go on to surpass their senpai within the agency. The new crew in town here are Mori Kalaipi, Takanashi Kiara, Nino Mai Inanis, Gargura, and Watson Amelia. And maybe it's because I'm a dumb Westerner and English is my primary language, but I find all of them to be entertaining in their own ways. To start, all of their designs are cool as hell. They all seem to be based off of mythology in some way. Callie's is based off the Grim Reaper, and my god is she one of the most extra members design-wise. When you see her, you know what she's about. EXCESSIVE ALCOHOL! Amelia's design is great too. With her being based off Sherlock Holmes' sidekick and looking blazed all the time, you wouldn't expect someone that looks like her to be like this. And Gorda is a shark who said the first letter of the alphabet and somehow got millions of fans. Ah. But my favorites are a tie between Ina and Kiara for sure. You'd think someone with the whole tentacle shtick would be more lewd, but surprisingly, she is one of the most wholesome talents of Hollow Live. With her drawing streams and overall comfy vibes, you can't really go wrong with watching Ina. You know what else is wholesome? That forehead. And Kiara, come on. She's based off a of phoenix, and to me, she has one of the most badass designs too. That sword and shield, you can't tell me those are slick. And that little chef half too, that's cute. Tell me you're not fucking with this. Hollow EN is really special in a lot of ways. To me, it's really important because I see it as Westerners influencing a Japanese entertainment medium, which is basically unheard of. Hollow Live appealing to a Western market is probably the best thing they have ever done, because now, anyone can pick any VTuber that they want to watch in the agency. The English branch serves as the most quote unquote proper gateway to these girls of the Western world. Hollow Live is the biggest it's ever been, and with fans all over the world watching these anime girls do some dumb shit on stream, I'm glad their importance is recognized. Okay, maybe their importance is too recognized, holy shit! Honestly, it still shocks me how popular they all are, and I can't even imagine the pressure of being some of the first VTubers to reach a million subscribers. And I know it's not a competition between the girls, I just can't believe they're some of the first given how recent they are in comparison to their senpai. Gerda was the first in Hollow Live as a whole to reach a million subscribers, and she did it only a month after her debut. And only three months after that, she reached 2 million subscribers. And as of recently, she just hit 3 million subscribers, surpassing Kazuna Ai as the number one most subscribed VTuber on YouTube. WHAT AM I DOING WRONG?! And let's not forget Mori Kalaibi. To me, she really feels like the most American VTuber besides Amelia and Coco. With her talents as a rapper, artist, gamer, and alcoholic, Kali quickly became a fan favorite. Also, Kiara and Kali, I've never seen a cuter couple. So when are they gonna fuck? Everyone is steadily approaching a million subscribers, which is great. However, not to gatekeep or anything, but I do miss when this whole VTuber thing was a small thing that degenerates like me would watch. There's nothing wrong with the other smaller VTubers out there, but in my opinion, Hollow Live really does have the best content. Cover does a great job curating their talents, and they absolutely know the power and influence that they currently have. That is to say, without a few potholes to sink into. In the same month Hollow Yen launched, Kiryu Koko and Akai Hato got themselves into a pit of boiling water. They checked their YouTube analytics, which listed Taiwan as a country. If you don't know, Taiwan's political status as a country is a bit of a taboo subject. The People's Republic of China, or mainland China, do not recognize Taiwan as a country, but instead as their own territory. 
This is because the PRC believes that Taiwan and mainland China comprise two segments in a single country's territory, and Taiwan wants to seek away from unification as part of the One China policy. So by saying Taiwan is a country, Coco and Hato's quote-unquote comments lit a fire under Hololive's ass, since Hololive had a Chinese branch with their own VTubers. The two were given a three-week suspension, with covers saying that they don't agree with their statements and with them leaking their statistics, it's considered leaking confidential information. To add fuel to the fire, Cover released a statement only for China, stating that they agree with the One China policy despite showing otherwise. And three days later, Cover decided to retract that statement and say that they want to appeal to a broader audience. Cover was at a crossroads. Do they grit their teeth and comply with China's political standards, or do they indefinitely suspend the two idols? One of them being the reason why we have an EN branch and the highest super chant earner in the world. As a result of Cover becoming more global, they decided to completely disband the Chinese branch of Hollow Live. Originally, Cover intended to give these avatars out to Hollow CN, letting them operate independently. But due to instances of verbal abuse towards Coco, the decision was made to let them go instead. This controversy still ripples to this day, as Coco's like to dislike ratio has gotten worse since the incident. She still got hate from her chat, which is unjustified. But again, it just goes to show the fragility of someone whose career is based off the internet. One little fuck up, no matter how innocent it is, will get people to rally against you. And cover protecting their talents from any harm is a good thing. But this situation shouldn't have happened, and is dumb as hell in the first place. Despite all of this controversy though, Hololive continued to grow at such a rapid pace. With idols reaching a million subscribers, the overall quality of streams getting better, and cover as a company continuing to grow, Hololive won't be at its peak for a while. I said in the beginning, Hololive transformed into a multimedia project spanning across the internet, and nothing is more evident of their growth than Hololive Alternative. In May 2021, Hololive released a teaser trailer for what was looking like Hololive's very first anime. Okay, another Hololive anime. This looked pretty badass, albeit really unfocused. The animation is really great, and this scene with Fubuki and Mio fighting Ayame, it's top tier shit. But what in the world is happening here? Like, for one second, Matsuri is running down a city with the typical bread and mouth trope, then the next, Noel and Flair are fighting Coco's dragon form in a fantasy setting, what? Well, it turns out that this isn't a teaser trailer for an anime, but rather, Hololive Alternative is going to span across different types of media. This could be anime, but it can also be manga, video games, and other forms of entertainment. Hololive Alternative, in their words, is about creating a world and providing more lore on the characters that these VTubers play, and with that context, it's pretty cool. To me, it always felt like they were given a loose identity to play, and they have to go off of that without trying to reveal their own, and to have them be more fleshed out in this project will be an interesting time to see, though if that compromises what they can say and do on stream is another question in itself. As of making this, there's only this teaser trailer and this comic with Fubuki and Mio out right now, and it has a lot of potential to be something really cool. I can only imagine the eldritch monster that Ina could become, or Callie swinging that big ass scythe around. Fun fact, Callie sang that song in the Hollow Alt trailer, and she sounded pretty good there. It's good to see the EN branch getting a lot of love. But let's address the elephant in the room, or should I say dragon. I keep mentioning Kiryu Koko throughout, as she was undoubtedly one of the most important members of Hollow Live. Everyone is a piece of the puzzle in the agency, but Coco was truly something else. When I first started watching Hollow Live back in 2020, it was when they were starting to rise in popularity. It took a bit for me to really see the appeal at first, but when I did, Inugami Korone and Natsuhiro Matsuri were the first I watched, but Coco quickly became my favorite streamer out of all of them. With her crass humor and crazy antics, I was hooked. I was also playing through all of the Yakuza games at the time, and her having the same last name as the protagonist in the first seven games was probably another factor in me liking her streams. Coco really felt like the clue to everyone in Hollow Live, with her collaborating with basically everyone under the sun with her meme reviews and her plans to create a Hollow Live house that can act as a safe space for the staff, she felt like she was more than just a VTuber. Her growth was definitely more rapid than her genmates, with her being the first to gain a million subscribers in her generation. And as stated before, she was the number one highest super chat earner on YouTube. So when she announced her graduation, or retirement, I was pretty miffed. At that point, I dug myself out of the Hollow Live rabbit hole, and I'll admit I wasn't too invested in the group anymore. And this isn't a knock against them, it was just I was moving forward in my life. A relationship, college, this whole YouTube thing, and a job, I didn't have time to watch VTubers. But Coco was an inspiration for why this YouTube channel even exists, besides the obvious Scott DeWass, Giguk, Filthy Frank, and Michael Reeves. Coco was just another one of those people. 
Who would have thought that an anime girl playing Yakuza Kiwami would inspire me to make these dumbass videos? So, in that regard, I have a lot of respect for Coco. Coco graduated on July 1st, 2021, and she thankfully left the company on good terms. It was her decision to leave, and with the ever-changing climate of YouTube becoming more and more unstable for creators like her, the antis restricting her chat to members only, and her mental health deteriorating, her leaving is understandable. I'm glad we as an audience got to see Coco in her prime. She was truly a revolutionary VTuber, and I have the utmost respect for her as a creator. She really tiptoed over the line between idol and entertainer, and as one of the most amusing faces of Hollow Live, I'm glad she'll be doing bigger and better things outside of it. In the short year and a half we got to see her, Coco will go down in history as one of the most important figures in not just VTubers, but live streamers in general. She knew how to put on a show, and with her graduation, the curtains finally closed, with fans demanding an encore. Wow, that was really depressing compared to last time now, wasn't it? But don't let these controversies and dips get in the way of quality. Hollow Live, and more so VTubers in general, started to blow up at a really dark time in the world, where we were all stuck left inside to our literal own devices. Them creating a parasocial relationship with their viewers did help a lot of people during the Great Crabs pandemic of 2020, and that's something I really can't knock against them, since entertainment was needed more than ever. To Hollow Live, thank you for the last year. These weird looking anime girls playing video games were one of the things that killed my time so effectively in times of boredom, and with that, I thank you. Every VTuber I watched, whether it's Suisei or Coco or Ina, the entertainment was needed. If you decide to jump into Hollow Live rabbit hole after this video, you can watch basically anyone that looks cool to you, but it's not like VTubers need any more exposure from me. Watch and blow your life savings on whoever you want to watch, they're all a great time no matter who it is. This will be the last time we'll talk about Hollow Live because they keep evolving and my slow ass can't catch up. Hell, by the time I upload this, something might be announced by then, and that's great. As the company continues to blossom, we'll keep throwing our hard earned cash to these figments of degeneracy, and you know, Hollow Live has a bright future ahead of them. As for me, though, I don't! My wallet's on its last legs! How can I keep my net worth if I can't keep my self worth? Eh, it doesn't matter, my self worth has been down a drain since August 3rd, 2020. There's literally nothing else I can make it go down even further. Hold up one sec. Hello? Don't know how to tell you this, but you're being evicted. What? Yeah, it says on your bank statement that you keep donating money to Mori Calliope Inugami. Corone? Uh, what the hell is we love big Asian How do you even know that was possible? Hey, are you listening to me? Hey! Hey! So tonight, call me and all. Mata tonight, Tame Kisuku, he told me, Kitty Chaga, can I? Yeah.